Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. I'm happy to announce that I'm now also on Odyssey. The entire content so far on this channel has been mirrored to my Odyssey channel and the future content will continue to get mirrored there. I plan to continue using YouTube as my main medium for now with Odyssey as an automated mirror. So, if you do not prefer using YouTube for whatever reason, you know where else to find me. Link to my Odyssey channel is in the description. I received very positive feedback on last week's video about the Xingyi full imagery concept. My understanding is that many community members appreciate this type of topic since it covers many important aspects including cultural background, martial practice, and the practical approach. If you have followed my channel for a while, you may have already noticed that this is a pattern that I have been using to present knowledge. It is a productive and effective way in not only organizing knowledge but also presenting it. I will continue to use this pattern and I am confident the quality of my videos will keep improving with time. Of course, I am also open to suggestions, so please feel free to share them with me. Since I talked about Xingyi imagery in last week's video, I'd like to introduce Bagua imagery today. Topics covered in today's video include first, animal imagery and animal form, second, imagery and motion, third, three imagery and three motion concept in Bagua, fourth, three imagery and three motion practice in Bagua, fifth, principle of Bagua imagery, sixth, misperceptions. 7th demonstration and 8th takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. First, animal imagery and animal form. In the beginning of last week's video on the Xingyi full imagery, I explained the history of imagery, which originated in Chinese philosophy and later got adopted by martial artists in order to guide martial practice. I recommend you watch it to get a better understanding of the evolution of the imagery concept. Link is in the description. In this section, I'd like to distinguish between animal imagery and animal form. Any internal styles, especially Xingyi and Bagua, have many forms related to animal movements. We can notice it by just reading about many of the names of martial movements. Naming movements after those of animals has been a very popular method in Chinese martial arts which I have talked about in a prior video. Naturally, most people mistakenly perceive animal imagery and animal form to be the same when in reality they are totally different things. Animal imagery is a guiding principle or internalized practice principle while animal form is just a practice or some specific martial techniques by imitating animal movements. In other words, imagery is the general principle and the forms focus on martial technique. For example, Xingyi four imagery are four specific practical principles used to guide stepping, body method, arm movements, and neck strength. While Xingyi 12 animal forms are 12 sets of specific martial techniques used for self-defense. So, how about Bagua? Based on written records, the Bagua 8 animals concept was first used by Sun Lu Tang to describe the 8 big palms. For example, he chose Shi, Lin, Long, Feng, She, Yao, Xiong, Hou, or lion, 
Qilin, a divine animal in Chinese culture. Dragon, phoenix, snake, hawk, bear, and monkey correlated to the eight trigrams Qian, Kun, Zhen, Xun, Kan, Li, Gen, and Dui. Of course, there are different versions of eight animal and eight trigram correlations as well, such as Cheng Style Gao Branch, which used snake, lion, swallow, eagle, dragon, bear, tiger, and monkey. In my opinion, using the eight animals to name the key practice of eight big palms is a bit mechanical. Overemphasizing animal forms in Bagua practice instead of focusing on the animal imagery ends up distancing from the internal style concepts, which should be proactively avoided at an advanced level. Now, let's look at another pair of interesting terms, imagery and motion, which brings us to the next topic. Topic 2. Imagery and Motion Imagery and motion are also two different topics. Imagery or xing, or xiang, is the overall practical principle expressed by a physical movement, which should be internalized. Motion or shi is an external physical movement that intentionally imitates certain external imagery. It may sound a bit abstract now, but it will become clear after watching this video. Also, I will use some examples to elaborate the difference between imagery and motion. Simply put, imagery is an internalized principle expressed through physical movements. Well, motion is the application of imagery used to work on physical movements. I will dive into more detail in the following sections, so please keep watching. So, how are imagery, form, and motion related to Bagua? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. Three imagery and three motion concept in Bagua. The three imagery in Bagua are Xing Zhou Ru Long, Dong Zhuan Ru Hou, Huan Shi Ru Ying. Translation Walking like a dragon, turning like a monkey, changing posture like an eagle. End translation. There is no unanimous agreement so far upon the source of this proverb. Some people credit Dong Hai Chuan, while some others credit Cheng Tinghua. Also, there exist variations of the three imagery as well. For example, some people extended it to a four imagery concept by adding another proverb, Wei Meng Ru Hu, or being powerful like a tiger, while another version said, Zuo or thinking like a squatting tiger. <clears throat> However, most Bagua practitioners use the three imagery instead of the four imagery. Again, this three imagery is used to guide overall Bagua practice and is a general principle that should be internalized in practice. Now, let's talk about the three motions of Bagua. They are Bu Ru Tang Ni, Bi Ru Ning Sheng, Zhuan Ru Mo Mo. Translation Stepping like riding in mud, arm motion like a twisted rope, turning circle like grinding millstone. End translation. By the way, the words Mo Mo used in the third sentence requires some attention. Mo has two sounds, one is in the second tone and the other in the fourth tone. When it is pronounced in the second tone, it is a verb meaning grinding, sharpening, 
and so on. Well, if it is pronounced in the fourth tone, it is the noun usually means millstone. So, mo mo means the pushing action that grants the upper millstone, aka runner stone, in a circular motion against the lower millstone, aka bad stone. That is the mo mo which was used in old days to grind grains. The three motion is used to describe the Bagua motion by borrowing three physical movements from daily life. Walking in mud, twisted rope, and grinding millstones. Compared to the three imagery, the three motion is more physical and external even though it aims to have an internal effect. This is why in the previous section, I differentiated between imagery and motion by saying that imagery is the internalization process while motion is using physical activity to guide Bagua physical motion. So, how should you practice the three imagery and the three motion in Bagua? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 4. Three imagery and three motion practice in Bagua. After understanding what three imagery and three motion concepts are in Bagua practice, it's now time to talk about how to actually practice Bagua based on these two concepts. Let's talk about the three imagery first. As I already mentioned both in the first part of this video and similar to what was mentioned in last week's Xing Yifo imagery video, the three imagery concept is applied as a general principle in Bagua, which should go beyond the physical level. In other words, it should be internalized through practice by mastering the animal spirit instead of merely imitating the physical movements of the animal, which is the foundation to differentiate between the three imagery and the three motion. First of all, the three imagery concept, walking, turning, and changing posture, is meant for training the three body parts, like body and arms, respectively. Walking like a dragon or Xing Zou Ru Long emphasizes the speed and the flexibility of Ba Gua stepping. Turning like a monkey or Zhuan Dong Ru Hou emphasizes that body turning movement during directional changes as well as the circle walking. Should be fast and the body structure should be dynamic as that of a monkey. Changing posture like an eagle or Huan Shi Ru Ying emphasizes that when changing postures, arm movement should be like that of an eagle maneuvering with its wings. Second, although the three imagery concepts include three aspects, stepping, body method, and arm movements, the core practice is still the body method or shen fa. Most of the time in Bagua, the body method controls the movements of the legs and arms, not the other way around. So, focusing on shen fa is the key practice toward mastering the Bagua three imagery concept. Any internal style has its unique shen fa and Bagua is no exception. I recommend you check out my video introducing shen fa, link is in the description. Let's now talk about the three motion. Again, those are stepping like a wadding in mud or bu ru tang ni, moving arms like twisting rope or bi ru ning sheng, turning circle like grinding millstone or zhuan ru mo mo. These three terms are used to describe the three types of motions involved in holding a bagua posture while walking a circle. Again, 
Each of them emphasizes different aspects, including foot stepping, arm twisting, and body turning toward the center of the circle. They are also used to describe three parts, legs, arms, and body in different type of martial motions. Let's talk about the, each of them. First, stepping like a wedding in mud. Now, you may think it is mostly limited to Cheng style, but actually that is not true. Many other Bagua styles also apply the mud stabbing practice. Even though Dong Hai Chuan never used this term in his writing, Dong Hai Chuan was directly involved in the process of development of Tang Ni Bu or mud wedding. So, mud wedding, no matter how obvious in the Bagua style, should be applied to a certain extent. Second, arm motion like a twisted rope. Again, any martial art, no matter internal or external, physical strength is the must have, or else it would not be considered a martial art. So, the twisting motion done by the arms indicates the importance of physical strength in Bagua practice. Last but not the least, Turning a circle like grinding millstones requires the body to turn toward the center of the circle. By doing so, the torso needs to maintain a certain level of tension and the turning motion should be initiated by the hips, not by the shoulders, which is a common beginner level mistake. Also, the grinding millstone indicates that the body should aim at the center at the circle, which is necessary to practice the turning motion on the waist. So, the three motions should not be neglected in your Bagua practice. To summarize, the three imagery and the three motion in Bagua practice are two categories of theory emphasizing different aspects and providing different benefits in training. While they are different concepts, there exist some interrelationships. For example, both of them train a practitioner to improve speed, flexibility, and adaptability in martial application by developing Bagua strength and power among other benefits. Let's now move on to the next topic, where we will talk about some general principles of three imagery and three motion. Topic 5. Principle of Bagua imagery and motion. As I have mentioned before, motion in Bagua practice is more subtle than form, while imagery is more abstract than motion. Among the three of them, the three imagery concept is more about a principle rather than a specific motion. So, introducing important principles can drastically help improve the understanding of these topics. Some of them are first, imagery and motion require co coordination and synchronization, and two, internalized imagery manifest motion. Let me explain them. One by one. First, imagery and motion require coordination and synchronization. The practice of both imagery and motion at their core actually emphasizes the coordination of different body parts so that they can be synchronized in expression of martial intention through physical movement. In other words, Coordination and synchronization are the main objective as they are the sources of strong martial power in application. So, if you realize that your Fa Jin is not powerful enough, one good solution is to determine the cause of the issue by analyzing the imagery and the coordination and the synchronization of the motion.
It requires a lot of experience, which is why a qualified teacher can be a great help in correcting this issue. Second, internalized imagery manifest motion. As introduced in the Xing Yi Full Imagery video, the practice of imagery is to internalize martial intention through physical motion, while the practice of motion is to help us build and strengthen the physical structure through imitating certain daily activities. So, understanding the functions and the benefits of each of these two topics can greatly help our Bagua practice. Actually, the ignorance of details of martial movements is partially caused by neglecting the practice of imagery and motion. So, if you find your movements to be lacking enough details in practice, then you should focus on imagery and motion practice. Those were two of the many important principles. I will introduce others in the future. Now, let's move on to everyone's favorite topic, misperceptions. Topic 6. Misperceptions of Bagua imagery and motion. There will never be a lack of misperceptions about concept in our community due to the nature of martial practice. But that doesn't mean we should just give up. We should try our best to actively observe and avoid misperceptions as that alone is half the battle. Today, I'd like to clarify one of the most common misperceptions of the Bagua imagery concept. Some people believe that the Bagua 3 imagery practice is about imitation of animal body structure and the movements as closely as possible. The reason this misperception exists is because people misunderstand the difference between imagery, motion, and form. Like I mentioned before, an animal movement aims at a specific technique, which is used as a martial application in a self-defense situation, while imagery and motion is for training purposes, which serve as the theoretical basis for each movement of the style, thus going beyond mere form practice. So, no matter how close you get to imitating an animal structure or movement, unless you internalize the spirit of animal movement, your practice will remain restricted to a mere physical level. In Chinese art, including painting and martial art, there is a famous proverb, 在于四与不四之间, translation, great art lies between likeliness and unlikeliness, end translation. Animal movement reflects the likeliness, while poor practice reflects the unlikeliness, but animal spirit is found between the two opposite states. We can use this proverb to guide our Bagua practice in terms of mastering imagery, motion, and form. Now, let me walk my talk in the demonstration section. Topic 7 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a part of the small Bagua Cheng style routine which I just taught to my students in Montreal two weeks ago. Okay, now let's practice this uh, in the slow motion. Right? So you can start from uh, Bagua circle walking by focusing on the three motions. Arm, then you walk. Then the movement. Okay, fall. Then five. Now let's practice with a normal speed, just a little bit faster. Okay, still start from uh, from here. Okay. Topic eight takeaways. First, 
Bagua eight animals concept was first used by Sun Lu Tang to describe the eight big palms. Second, imagery of Xing or Xiang is the overall practical principle expressed by physical movement which should be internalized. Motion or Shi is an external physical movement that intentionally imitates certain external imagery. 3. The three imagery in Ba Gua are Xing Zou Ru Long, Dong Zhuan Ru Hou, Huan Shi Ru Ying, translation, walking like a dragon, turning like a monkey, changing posture like an eagle, in translation. Fourth, the three motion in Ba Gua are Bu Ru Tang Ni, Bi Ru Ning Sheng, Zhuan Ru Mo Mo, translation, stepping like wading in mud. Arm motion like a twisted rope, turning circle like grinding milestone. Top fifth, three imagery and three motion in Bagua practice are two categories of theory emphasizing different aspects and providing different benefits in training. Sixth, two important principles of Bagua imagery and motion are first. Imagery and motion require coordination and synchronization. Second, internalized imagery manifest motion. Seventh, a common misperception about Bagua imagery and motion is that Bagua three imagery practice is about imitation of animal body structure and movement as closely as possible. Remember, this is a misperception something to be avoided in your practice. Do not forget to check out the demonstration section to get an idea of how to practice Bagua imagery and motion. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.